so uh, you can see here because in case of insulator we say that the band gap between uh, the conduction band and the valence band is very large and no electron can move from the valence band to conduction band uh, even at uh, t equal to 0 or even at uh, at room temperature because very uh, high energy is required for those electrons to move from valence band to conduction band so no conduction is possible in case of uh, insulators and we see that the conduction band and the valence bands those are formed by the valence electron okay because we have the valence because uh, in case of any bonding or any interaction only valence electrons contribute so the conduction band and the valence band in a solid is due to the presence of valence electron so what about the other electrons because um, in case of silicon we see there is uh, 2s and 2p levels are also but those are field shell so th those field shell form a field band but they don't contribute in the conduction and other properties of the crystal so uh, uh, the valence band and the conduction band is due to the presence of valence electron and uh, now uh, how we can distinguish now the semiconductors because in case of semiconductor we say the energy gap between conduction band and the valence band is small but at t equal to 0 it also behaves as an insulator because no electron can move from valence band to conduction band and it uh, electron cannot jump from uh, valence band to conduction band at t equal to 0 so at t equal to 0 uh, this semiconductor behaves as insulator because there is no free electron that can conduct um, uh, there is no electron can conduct so uh, but at t equal to uh, at room temperature if we say so if we have a room temperature so these electron can acquire energy and can move from this valence band to conduction band so it can excite so it can excite it from this valence band to conduction band because in case of conduction band those electron are free to move so if they are free to move so they can conduct electricity so you can see here in this figure there is also a field band uh, in case of semiconductors so using this concept we can also explain the behavior of metals because in case of metals we say the conduction band and the valence band conduction band and the valence band are overlapping with each other and uh, you can see so there is no gap between conduction band and the valence band so electrons are free to move so that's why these are good conductor of electricity so uh, now uh, we have discussed the energy band diagram of the conductors so uh, where we have seen that conduction band is overlapping with the uh, valence band metals are the conductors because in this case conduction band is overlapping with the valence band but when they are in conduction band they are free to move in the crystal for conduction and they can easily uh, conduct electricity so uh, now the semiconductors so we have uh, seen the energy di band diagram so from there we have seen that at t equal to 0 no electron has energy to jump from valence band to conduction band so if they uh, can't jump from valence band to conduction band so no electron is free so in that case semiconductor behaves as insulator at t equal to 0 but what happen at room temperature so some of the valence electron can gain energy and uh, they can move from valence band to conduction band so uh, we can take the example of silicon and germanium in case of uh, semiconductor and uh, for the band gap of uh, uh, germanium is 0 0.7 electron volt and for silicon it is 1.1 electron volt and we can uh, easily those electron can easily move from valence band to conduction band uh, at room temperature uh, but what the uh, problem with this uh, intrinsic semiconductor is that because we have not talked about the any impurity they are pure crystal and the pure uh, semiconductor in the metals because these electrons in the semiconductors they are free to move when they are in the conduction band but uh, the, but the problem is the conductivity of the semiconductor is small as compared to the metals. So if you want these semiconductors to uh, applicable in uh, several electronic devices, so we use 
doping there because doping increases the conductivity of semiconductor because we when we use uh, intrinsic semiconductor those are pure so the conductivity is less so when we add impurities to it conductivity increases in case of semiconductors and um, those semiconductors are extrinsic semiconductors and uh, but what happen when you increase the temperature of semiconductor because as we have done the experiment also where when we are increasing the temperature of semiconductor resistivity changes so, uh, with the increase in temperature resistivity decreases so if resistivity decreases so in other way we can say conductivity increases so uh, in case of uh, when we want to talk about in terms of the band energy what we we say because when you are saying the uh, increase in temperature conductivity increases for the semiconductors so in band gap we say there is decrease in the band gap due to which conductivity is increasing so this is a important concept that with the increase in temperature band gap of semiconductors is decreasing so here is a insulator so uh, we know that uh, uh, we have seen the energy band diagram and electrons um, they can't move from valence band to conduction band due to very high energy gap so they are uh, they do not conduct electricity and uh, here is example of uh, insulator is diamond is there is a very high energy gap between valence band and conduction band and they do not do not conduct electricity at even at high temperatures so we can have other examples also wood plastic those are insulators due to the very high energy gap between valence band and conduction band so now here we talk about direct and indirect band gap semiconductors because there are two types of semiconductors direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconductors so what are these so uh, you can see here the graph is plotted between energy and this k k is the momentum vector uh, of the electrons and uh, uh, in 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 the crystal so and these uh, uh, red curves shows a valence band and the conduction band so direct what are direct band gap semiconductors those material for which maximum of the valence band and the minimum of the conduction band lie for the same value of k so those are named as direct band gap material and uh, the example we have uh, for example is a gall gallium arsenide indium uh, phosphide cadmium sulfide so there are so many others they have uh, they are direct band gap they occur at the same value of k so what happen when an electron from uh, when an elect suppose there is one electron present at this uh, uh, level of the conduction band so what happen because when uh, when it de excite from valence uh, from the conduction band to valence band so in that case there is uh, with the same momentum it will de excite okay but what happen when electron is at this uh, indirect band gap and it want to come to this valence band so there is a change in the momentum here so uh, it means when electron sitting at the bottom of conduction band and we recombines with the sitting at the top of the valence band so there will be no change in the momentum values takes place because they occur at the same value of momentum and uh, energy is conserved by the means of emitting photon if you know if you know uh, when uh, we want an electron to go from valence band to conduction band so how it will go we give some energy okay suppose you have given a photon of energy and this uh, electron will move from valence band to conduction band okay so what happens when electron is already in the conduction band and uh, want to come uh, or want to uh, come to this ground state or the valence band so what happen it will come to this uh, valence band by the emission of photon yes energy is released so but what happening is in the case of momentum because we know that there is a conservation of energy should be there conservation of momentum should be there so we are saying that when electrons in case of uh, direct band gap it is sitting at this uh, uh, maximum of the uh, this level of this conduction band and it wants to come in the valence band so there will be emission of photon 
and this uh, this emission of photon due to the conservation of energy and they occur at the those electrons in this valence band and the conduction band they occur at same momentum and uh, when energy is conserved by the means of photon such transitions are called as radiative transitions because some radiation is coming so that that radiation is a photon so in that case such transitions we named as radiative transitions and what about indirect band gaps so indirect band gap semiconductors in which the maximum of the valence band and the minimum of the conduction band they do not occur at the same value of k so if they do not occur at the same value of k those are indirect band gap semiconductor and the silicon and the germanium you know those are indirect band gap semiconductors because they do not occur at same value of k and in case when electron wants to recombine with the hole present in the valence band so uh, how it can possible there it is possible uh, by the emission of phonons here because we know that uh, there is a emission of photon in case of direct band gap because we are saying due to the conservation of energy so there should be a photon uh, releasing of the photons is there due to the radiative transitions so but in case of indirect band gaps what's happening because they are not at the same value of k so to conserve k so there will be a other quantities there that is named as phonons so this phonon is one it is a quanta of vibrations okay so using those phonons how uh, because there is a energy difference here okay so uh, how it will be there, there is a uh, phon one phonon will be there okay so one phonon is there and uh, then uh, uh, it will be at this stage and then it will go to the valence band so in case of indirect band gap you have phonons and this is a non radiative cause it, it is just a disturbance that atoms are uh, transferring from one to other atom okay so this is the phonon is here and which is due to uh, uh, why it is due to this because we have to conserve the momentum okay so in that case when phonons are involved and uh, uh, without producing photons and that case this is a non radiative transition and after that when you uh, phonon is there then it is exciting uh, then it is de exciting from the uh, conduction band to the valence band photon will be there so in that case it is a radiative but when we are only talking about phonons we uh, that transition is a non radiative transitions and we named it as we can also name it as radiation less transitions so uh, now what is the difference between direct and the indirect band gap so we have earlier studied okay these uh, the materials uh, which are at the same value of k conduction and the valence band they are direct band gap and they they don't have the same value of k so those are indirect band gap semiconductor but in this case efficiency is high and uh, but in case of uh, indirect band gap efficiency is low but in case of uh, direct band gap probability of recombination is high so you are giving photon you are giving photon and uh, one electron from the valence band is going to the conduction band so after certain time there is a probability that th that electron which is that now conduction band can again recombine to the hole or again de excite from conduction band to the valence band so that means the probability of recombination is high when you have same value of k but in case when you have a uh, different value of k so the probability is less due to the different value of k it, it is not easily and it can't, can't easily come from valence band to conduction band due to different value of k because they need to because if they want to go from conduction band to valence band phonon will be there so if we there is no possibility of phonon so recombination in case of indirect semiconductor is low and uh, example we have already talked about that in case of direct semiconductor we use gallium arsenide and in case of um, indirect semiconductor uh, we know silicon and germanium so now we talk about fermi energy and the fermi level so what is fermi energy and the fermi level so earlier we have talked about valence band and conduction band so uh, all the levels in the valence band are filled and all the levels in the conduction band are 
unfilled in case of semiconductors so what is fermi level now fermi level is the highest most occupied level uh, in the material at t equal to 0 so that level is the fermi level and the energy corresponding to this fermi level we named it as fermi energy okay so uh, this is the fermi energy and the fermi level fermi level is the highest energy level that can electron occupy at absolute zero temperature so here is a fermi dirac function so what is the fermi dirac function in the fermi dirac distribution so it describes the occupancy of energy levels by electrons in a solid so how they are uh, they are occupied in the solids so uh, we, uh, we know that in a solid we have number of levels okay number of states are there so if number of states are there how much number of states are occupied and how much states are unoccupied we talk about in terms of density of states okay uh, levels in the states are same as we earlier uh, talked about in terms of the levels there are n levels and uh, due to the n number of atoms so here we are saying number of states okay so there are number of states in the um, solid so if there are number of states in the solids um, what are the number of states per unit volume so if there are we know that there are number uh, this number of states are there so how much number of states per unit volume do we talk about in terms of density of states so density of states represents number of states per unit volume in this uh, in this solid okay if suppose there are n number of states in a solid okay but how much number of states are occupied and how much number of states are unoccupied so depending upon that we deal with the fermi function so fermi function tells us about uh, tells us about how much numbers are in the uh, levels are occupied and how much number of uh, levels are unoccupied and we in the fermi function we deal with the term fermi energy okay and this uh, uh, this is expression of this fermi function okay so you can see there is an expression we have e minus f by kt where ef is a uh, fermi energy k is the boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature so this is a fermi function we are using that specify how many number of uh, existing states at energy e okay so it tells us about the uh, how many number of existing states are there in solids and we know in case of solids we have number of states very large number of states so we deals with uh, we deals uh, the solids statistically and if we deals with the statistically we use probability distributions for that and this uh, function is the probability distribution function for solids in terms of fermi level and fermi energy so you can see here uh, this is a t equal to 0 case we are considering and we are saying that at t equal to 0 this fermi function has value 1 so this is a value 1 for t equal to 0 and uh, below fermi energy so if it is below fermi energy so this uh, uh, level value is 1 uh, function value is 1 and for Uh, greater than this fermi energy you will see this value is zero so it is just look like a step function it is like a step so we name this function as a step function then so what about when your temperature is not zero but it has certain value so if it is has a certain value so that means some of electrons can move from valence band to conduction band so if they can move so you we can't say all the levels uh, below the fermi level are filled because one of the electron has been moved to uh, valence band to conduction band so there will be a vacancy in the valence band so it could not be one here now so it is some possibility that it has uh, gone from valence band to conduction band so now your function is look like this and as you are increasing your temperature your function is now not a step function so firstly we are saying at t equal to 0 all levels are filled below the fermi level and uh, all the levels above the fermi level they are empty but as you are increasing temperature there is possibility that electron can move from valence band to conduction band and um, your fermi function 
will look like these curves okay so you see here uh, we are why we have taken this 0 and 1 so if you have t approaches to 0 uh, and we are considering energy greater than fermi energy your fermi function is zero and when you are talking about energy less than fermi energy your fermi function is one so it is a like a step function at t equal to zero but as we increase the temperature so there is possibility that electron can move from valence band to conduction band so if it, if it has moved from valence band to conduction band so there will uh, it has left with some hole vacancy it is a vacancy in the uh, valence band now so that means not all have been occupied now so in that way your function is look like these curves